Have you ever heard that the Hoover Dam, which finished construction on March 1st, 1936, is still drying? Is there any truth to this statement, and if so, how has the Hoover Dam been able to be used safely over the past several decades? Well, the answer to this question is maybe, as we really don't know. Engineers expect that with the conventional method of drying, the Hoover Dam would take 125 years to fully dry, so technically, the Hoover Dam shouldn't be completely dry till 2061. But the thing is, during the construction, engineers implemented various techniques that would speed up the drying process of the Hoover Dam, like filling the dam up with water, which actually ironically helps. But we aren't exactly sure how effective these processes are, especially given the large-scale implementation. So unfortunately, we don't exactly know if it is fully dry or not, but it is quite likely that it is still in the process of curing. However, even if the Hoover Dam is fully cured, the process would have taken several decades to do so. So how have we been able to use it safely all this time? Well, looking back at the history of the dam, the plan was originally developed by the U.S. Bureau of Reclamation about a century ago. They proposed building a dam along the Arizona-Nevada border in order to both harness power from the Colorado River and direct water to developing agricultural regions. See, at this time, the population in the southwest was very low and just starting to pick up compared to the rest of the U.S. So this project was meant to boost immigration and settlement in the area. The plan was originally proposed to Congress in 1922 with a price tag of $49 million or about $700 million in today's money. Herbert Hoover really wanted to build this dam in 1922, which was initially called the Boulder Dam as this would direct water to seven nearby states, but this was met with a lot of opposition. In fact, it wouldn't be till 1928 that President Calvin Coolidge would authorize the project. Eventually, Construction began in 1931 and throughout the process, 4.3 million cubic yards or 868 million gallons of concrete would be required to build a monstrosity. In the end, the Hoover Dam would come out to weigh 6.6 .6 million tons capable of handling 45,000 pounds per square foot of pressure. But how was a drying dam able to cope with that much pressure? Well, as I mentioned before, the water in the dam actually helps the concrete to cure. A common misconception with concrete is that oftentimes people think that cement dries as the water in the mixture evaporates, but this is not true. Evaporation is just a physical change, but the curing of concrete is a chemical change. In reality, as concrete cures, water molecules are integrated on a microscopic level where they form crystals which helps to bind the wet cement and form concrete. This process of forming crystals by slowly binding the water molecules to the tricalcium silicate molecules in the cement to form concrete is what takes several decades. But letting it cool naturally was not only time intensive but also dangerous. You see, during this process of curing, a lot of heat is released by the chemical reaction of cement curing into concrete as this is an exothermic reaction or basically a reaction that dissipates heat. The concern with this is that as heat is released, the inside of the dam will be much hotter than the surface of the dam as heat essentially gets trapped within the dam. Over time, this could lead to cracks and weaken the dam. As a result, the solution to this conundrum was to make a network of cooling pipes with circulating water within the dam to cool it down. By the end of construction, over 600 miles of pipe would be embedded within the dam, and fun fact, you can actually still see these pipes within certain deep galleries in the dam. While this entire process may sound foreign, you have probably seen it being implemented around you and you just never realized. One of the most common places this process is used is the curing of the plaster on an in-ground pool. It takes 10 to 12 months for the interior plaster finish inside of a pool to fully cure. But of course, we don't see homeowners or businesses waiting nearly this long to fill up their pool. In fact, you can fill up your pool the day this plaster is applied as the water will just help to cure it. Around 60% of the curing for a pool will happen within the first 28 days and the remaining 40% will happen over the next 8 to 10 months. And this is why the first month or so in operation, you'll find crystals on the floor of the pool. 
Its technical term is plaster dust and this is the same process we saw in the Hoover Dam. As the plaster on the pole cures, crystals form which help seal and solidify the new finish. As the Hoover Dam is exponentially larger than a regular pole, it takes an exponentially longer time to cure. In the end, the Hoover Dam may very well still be curing, but this is not a concern as the water blocked by a dam is just helping it cure. Initially, the dam was not filled until it was sturdy enough to handle the pressure of the water, but after that step was crossed, the water only helps. And the thing is, many scientists say that concrete actually never fully cures and it simply just keeps getting stronger with time. So even past the expected 125 year time frame, the Hoover Dam won't be completely cured. But by then and even now, the vast majority has already dried and there are absolutely no safety concerns. But given this extensive drying process, it's no wonder the Hoover Dam is expected to be one of the few structures that will survive thousands of years past our existence. If you guys thought this video explained the drying process of the Hoover Dam well, then make sure to drop a like and consider subscribing if you'd like to see more questions just like this one logically answered. But until then, I'm Hari and I'll see you guys on the next one.